What a bullet! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently! And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end! Burnley win the next ball. It's Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Paul Fontella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Teller. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Teller's day. And Burnley are three. Can he go on the outside? Comes inside. Comes up. shot. Oh, what a goal. Manuel Benson once more. That is top class. Burnley have done it. Fantastic. Clarence deserved the championship title. They've been the best side throughout the campaign. Burnley have won the second tier. What a fantastic achievement. The players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everyone and welcome along to the latest episode of the Turfcast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Redman, ahead of this midweek clash between Burnley and Plymouth Argyle at Turf Moor. A chance for the Clarets to bounce back quickly from the disappointing draw at the Kassam Stadium, but the XG was higher than it was against Portsmouth at home, so some fans do seem a little bit happier with it. Um, but yes, obviously not the result we were looking for, and not the performance really as such that we were looking for, although I do probably agree it probably was a better performance than the Portsmouth game. But anyway, as usual with the pre-game show, we do get a fan of the opposition on, and I am pleased to introduce Aaron from the Green and White podcast. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And if you're... Listeners want to vote for us in the football content awards. They can. <laughs> They're welcome to. We're up against. I was them. just. I was just going to say congratulations on your nomination at the football content awards. Obviously, unfortunately for you, you are going up against some very good podcasts. Um, I yeah. do not include myself in that. Um, what are they called? Um, they're that good that I can't remember the name. Not the top twenty mm. and the um, X Pros um, under the cosh. Two very good mm. pods that I think me and you both agree are probably going to win it. Um, yeah. But yes, listeners, feel free, listeners. If if you look at Aaron's content, I think that's better. That's fine by me. I mean, you're wrong, but that's fine by <laughs> me. No, I'm joking. I've never actually. I mean, I have because I remember obviously we did something earlier in the show where you did the season preview and got me on, and I watched that, and I watched a couple of others from there. But no. Oh, genuinely, mate. Uh, congrats. Looking forward to, to meeting you with the rest of the team. As I said on WhatsApp early today, if you do beat us this week, I will be avoiding you at the event. Yeah, I think um, you should just do winner takes all. Whoever wins on Tuesday night can win the award as well. Um, I mean, I'll that, tell that. That's probably, that's probably in our favour, to be fair. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, um, no, it's, it's, it's nice to be recognised and congratulations to yourselves as well. But um, yeah. I will reiterate, come and vote for us instead of Turfcast. Yeah, no, genuinely, I agree with you. It's, it's not. I mean, I've, it's not something I've ever. I mean, I've not actually put anything out on on YouTube yet about it. So some of the viewers might not actually be aware that we are nominated. Um, I just put it all on Facebook and Twitter, and, and I am going to do something eventually. I just haven't got around to it. Um, but again, it's. I've never done something like this before because it usually is just a case of the judges vote, and obviously you'll understand being sort of like the fans of of clubs that aren't the big six. And you know, all Leeds and Sunderland and, and them sort of teams, it's difficult to get the recognition. So it is good to get the recognition. And look, I'm not expecting anything. If I get third, I'll be I'll basically be taking that as a win up against the other two, but I'm not expecting it either. So yeah, it's gonna be a good event and I'm looking forward to it. But anyway, mate, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the game at the weekend and your season, Plymouth. Let's talk about Plymouth then. How are you feeling about your season so far? Because it's been a bit of a change recently and uh, some decent results have started coming out. Yeah, to be honest, it's already exceeded my expectations completely. Um, we were told by an awful lot of uh, Derby and uh, Birmingham and DC United fans that we were be lucky to cobble together a couple of wins. So to do it this early in the season against some uh, very strong opposition, obviously yeah. we're delighted with that. Um, it's It's, you know going a lot better than I expected. I expected us to be where Cardiff are now, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, so, yeah, no no real complaints. And I think 
the fact that I'm going into Tuesday confident, not not confident enough of a win, but confident in in the squad, in the manager, in the club. I think that speaks a lot. Yeah, fair enough. Let's just talk about your season then, though, because just look outside looking in, I've not paid too much attention to Plymouth, as you would uh, would expect. I'm sure you've not paid too much attention to Burnley. But obviously, start of the season on an absolute whimper with your massive defeat um, at Sheffield Wednesday. And then, obviously, just forgetting the cup, a draw at home to Hull and draw away to QPR. Decent results, but, you know, not ripping up any trees. Then a defeat at Watford, who, to be fair, have started well. And then a poor home defeat against Stoke, um, was sort of like the first part of the season, and I was looking at that and thinking because I actually predicted you guys to just about stay up. I think um, on the on the preview that I did for you, um, and I was looking at it thinking, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe 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 they are going to go down with a bit of a whimper. But since then, you've played Sunderland, West Brom, and Luton, three teams that at the start of the season were expected to be up there. You could argue that Luton probably won't be, and and I agree with that. But six points out of them two, and I think pretty much any fan base in the league, ourselves included, would be happy with six points from Sunderland at home, West Brom away and Luton at home. So has something changed for you to turn the corner and, and really start turning the screw on some good teams? Or has it just been something that has seemed to have been coming? Yeah, well, I think it's been coming, which is, as you you know, as you read out that list of results, is a bit of a, bit of a surprise because um, actually we've been, apart from that 4-0 drubbing where we looked awful and mm -hmm. we had, basically assigned ourselves to relegation like instantly as did all of um the nation's media instantly said that's it when Rooney's blue vargala league one bound um we've actually looked all right in every other game even against qpr um we looked we looked okay up until adam forshaw stupidly got himself sent off we had freddie Osaka sent off not long after him as well so we played okay we didn't play that long with nine men but we played with nine men um, let's just swing that as a positive, shall we? Um, you know, against Stoke, we should have beaten Stoke. Um, Stephen Schumacher Stoke at that point. Um, and you know, they've they've not exactly started the season how they would like. Um, and we, we did all right against them up at West Brom, narrow one nil loss. Loads of their fans saying, uh, best side that we've played all season so far. I appreciate we're, we're very early days, but um. You know, Sunderland fans praising us. Like it's it's just slowly started. The last this month is just clicked. Um before September, we weren't we weren't even really getting opportunities at all, never mind like mm. having to bury them. Um whereas now like our attacking our front three and our like midfield three, it's sort of like a four three three. Um but it's just it's just clicked. It's just clicked. Like we knew the players had the ability. They're just showing it now. So, um, yeah, a bit of both to answer your question. Yeah, fair enough. Obviously, you mentioned there, Wayne Rooney, of course, is the manager at the minute. What's the current... Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess it's a positive feeling at the minute because, like you said, the season's already exceeded your expectations. So you must be happy with Rooney so far in his management? Yeah, so far, so far. Had we not had this month and we had a slightly different one, might be a, a slightly different answer, but I suppose that's that's football, right? Everything yeah. uh, is swayed with results. And um, whilst we're playing the way we are, uh, he seems to have learned an awful lot of lessons from his time at Birmingham, at Birmingham and at Derby. Uh, he seems to understand that he has to make in-game in changes tactically now. Um, he's clearly wants to be a manager or else he wouldn't be at Plymouth Argyle, let's be honest. Um, and it's all going relatively well. But like I said... I expected us to be where Cardiff are and he's shut me up as well. So, But I think we also need to maybe not get too high with the highs and too low with the lows, which I am very guilty of. So right now he is the Messiah in a, yeah. in, in two months' time. We, <laughs> we might be asking for his head. Uh, but Aren't we all as football fans though, mate? Exactly, exactly. Uh, um, obviously, at the start of the season, your aim would have just been survival, I imagine. Yeah. Has that changed or is your aim still just survival? You've said there, obviously, you don't want to get ahead of yourself too much and get too high and, and too low. So I would presume that your answer will be still, yes, let's get to what, what appears to be the magic 50-point mark in this league um, and then go from there. No, I, I think we're going up as champions, to be honest. <laughs> um, 
like I said, no, I think I think the the aim is still the same. I think it's just to better what we did last season, which is obviously yeah. we stayed up um, on the final day by a point. Uh, thank you, Birmingham. Thank you, Wayne Rooney, who we jokingly said was our manager of the season last year on our end of season awards pods, and then we went and hired him. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, I think it's just improve on where we were last year. Like currently being fifteenth is is good enough for us. We're delighted with that. If we can mm. stay somewhere between that dreaded dotted line and halfway for the rest of the season, I think we'll be absolutely delighted. Yeah, fair enough. You've, you've mentioned already sort of like your front three are dangerous and your midfield three are dangerous. Obviously, um, this is a great audition for a certain someone um, mm. to potentially be joining in January. Um, yes. But talk to me about the the main players at Plymouth. Like, Who should we be looking out for as Burnley fans? Like, Who, who should we be worried about? Yeah, I think you guys will already know about um, Morgan Whitaker, who you signed on the final day. Remember, <laughs> uh, I was, you know, if, if Burnley come calling, he definitely will not say no. Um, we were as shocked. Obviously, we spoke privately, didn't we, on, on WhatsApp and stuff, and we were both kind of shocked that he'd stayed at Argyle come come the end of play. Um, I fully expected him. Started mocking him up in in Burnley shirts, ready for our <laughs> deadline day stream. So I think uh, Burnley fans will know a bit about him. He's a bit of a moments player. Don't expect him to run the show for 90 minutes. He'll he'll randomly pop up. Um, he'll have a couple of moments of magic. Normally sticks one in the top bins from about 30 odd yards and then goes home. Um, and that's that's basically it. It, it. it won't he won't dictate play, he won't do um an awful lot really. And that's not me calling him lazy, um, which some people might. Um, but that's just that's just the sort of player he is. Um, there's there's a tweet that I put out when we first signed him. It's still it's still live because deleting is cheating. Or I call him an absolute donkey, and he's he's proven me wrong. Um, but like I said, in those moments, he's one of the best players I've ever seen in an Argyle shirt. On the opposite wing, so on the left hand side, we've got uh, Ibrahim Sissoko, who last season was scoring. I don't want to say goals because it may have only been one goal. Uh, in the Europa League for Toulouse. Uh, we've somehow managed to get him on loan. No idea why or how, because uh, he looks exceptional now that he's found his feet. Um, we thought he was a bit of a step-over merchant to start with, uh, mm. but he can strike a ball uh, so sweetly, so perfectly. He's basically Morgan Whitaker, but on the other side, and a few more step-overs thrown in. Um, so look out for our wingers. Uh, your fullbacks will be busy. Um, or if you play with wing backs, I don't really know. Um, as you said at the top, I've paid no attention to Burnley this season. I just expected you to sort of like run away with the league um, and uh, uh, watch the EFL highlights the other night and I must have fallen asleep before you were on because I have no recollection of, of your nil-nil draw with Oxford. Um, the, the potentially may not have shown it, mate, because not a lot happened, if I'm honest with you. No. I've not I've not seen the highlights myself, but I'm oh, okay. not sure how they would have made two minutes out of it. No, oh, fair enough. Um, who else is there to look out for? Um, Lewis Gibson on Friday night, uh, that three-one win over Luton on uh, Sky. Uh, Lewis Gibson was phenomenal. He was a target, or allegedly a target for um, Luton in the summer. Uh, he is he was signed by Everton for five million pounds from Newcastle as a as a youngster. We somehow managed to pick him up on a free, um, and I am understand fully why they paid five million pounds for him and we might get a substantial uh, figure out of him uh, when Burnley come calling he might not say no uh, as the phrase goes um, but he's he's exceptional he's one of if not the best defender I've seen in Argo shirt um, but I think a lot of that has to be caveated with that we're at like one of the best stages we've ever been at a club, so a lot of these players yeah. are the best players um, that we've ever been able to afford. Um, so yeah, who else? Midfield, we've just signed, or he's just started getting starts. He got his first start against Luton on Friday, uh, scored the first goal. Rami Al Hajj is a Lebanese Swedish centre attacking midfielder who uh, sits in that like ten role. Look out for him. I think he might start again. Obviously, uh, Obafemi will be uh, ruled out for this one, I assume. So I can imagine that Rami will get a start again um, in that 10 roll in behind Ryan Hardy. 
that's they're they're the main ones, I think. Yeah, fair enough. You know what? I completely forgot about Michael Obafemi. How, how's he getting on? Yeah, he's okay. Uh, finding he's finding his feet. I think you can tell that there's a player in there. Um, yeah. He's just sort of trying to learn the way, like where he fits in our team. I think um, him and Hardy. I haven't really hit ground running yet in terms of goals, but once they do, I think we, I think we've got two exceptional options there, um, way above our pay grade, um, and yeah, they're not really an awful lot to report on of a Femi yet. He's um, finding his feet still, really. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. I did see one tweet by a Burnley fan whose name I cannot remember, but I wouldn't mention it anyway because it was a ridiculous tweet saying that we should have kept hold of him and let Lyle Foster go. Now, Lyle Foster hasn't had the greatest of starts to the season, but let's right. just all calm down a little bit, to be fair. Right. Um, I, I say I've not paid too much attention to Luton, and I haven't, but I, I was working on Friday night, so again, I didn't watch a game against Luton. I did see the highlights and I saw some of the stats. And I think it's fair to say you, you, you deserved the win. Um, yeah. ju judging from the highlights, I felt like you took the game to Luton. You stepped up. Mm -hmm. It's not like you just sat back and said, right, break us down. So what style of play can we expect? Because the Sunderland game as well, obviously, you scored three, was it, at home to Sunderland? Yeah. Three, two, were it, Sunderland, yeah. Um, and then, obviously, three at home again to, to Luton. But, obviously, the, the the big factor in that is they were both home games. West Brom away. I mean, again, I'm not. you said West Brom fans did praise you, but I'm not sure how you mm -hmm. played in that. How are you expecting your team to play at Turf Moor on Tuesday. Are you going to step onto us? Are you going to press us high? Or do you think you'll be sitting back and saying, right, break us down? Yeah, likely. Um, I don't think we're going to show you the sort of respect that Oxford may have. Um, I think um, from, from what I have read really briefly when I knew I was coming on here, Oxford uh, sort of part the bus. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not going to do that. Uh, that number three uh, that you, you mentioned is crucial because we have only won three away games since our promotion back to the championship. So, yes, we're going to come at you. Yes, we're most probably going to try and attack and, and uh, counter when we can. Um, but we are not great at picking up wins away from home. So if we can pick up three points um, at Turf Moor, that'd be phenomenal. We also have an awful record at Turf Moor, um, as far as I can remember. We are, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna come. We're gonna we're gonna take the game to you. I don't think our front three, front four, really know how to play any other way. So that's yeah. kind of kind of what we're gonna do. I think um, against like, Luton had their chances and their opportunities, um, but as you said, we 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 deserve to win that game um, fully and defensively. We looked solid even though we conceded. We looked pretty good defensively against Sunderland as well. Um, we've got a young, a new centre-back who's just joined us uh, from the Hungarian League, but I think he only played like seven times in, in Hungary's top flight um, before we snapped him up, so he's still a bit raw. Um, yeah. But I think once he finds his feet alongside Lewis Gibson, I think we'll 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 be fine defensively. Um, but like I said, that, that's, the only real, that's the only real way we know how to attack. Um, so I can't see us coming and parking the bus. If we do, it yeah. will shock us. Well, I, I think that's fair. I think that works in our favour as well, to be fair. But I did say that to the Portsmouth fan uh, and we did nearly end up losing that game. Um, ultimately, we won it. Um, but yeah, there's, there's been two teams that have literally just sat on the edge of the box and said, break us down. That were Blackburn Rovers and Oxford. And we, we didn't break either of them down when they yeah. did that. Um, so I, I would prefer you to come at us. Um, so but I do if worry. That, if that works, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like put it past our, um, you know, our scouting tactical network to to maybe come and do that. But I just, I just don't see. I just don't see that happening. So I think. I, I think, think you fun. make a good point though. When you when you look at your forward players, it would be stupid just to stick to, to, to two yeah. banks of eight, uh, two banks of four. Sorry, on the edge of the yeah. box. It, you need to utilize them forward players, right? I think that's the best thing for you to do. Press as high and, and try and get the ball to your forward players. Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to see us. Obviously, as everybody would, right? Um, I'd love to see us like nick one early, um, mm -hmm. and then just try and just try and play you on the counter. That would be that would be phenomenal. But. Um, yeah, my, my heart's saying that we are, we are actually going to come up and get a win. Um, whether my head agrees is, is a completely different uh, situation. But yeah, I think to, to utilise the the four, five attacking options that we've got, 
we we can't be we can't really be parking the bus. Yeah, no, that's fair enough, and I completely agree. Um, a bit of a weird sort of like personal question here on this one because fans of a certain age, um, mm. like myself, uh, will obviously remember 1990 the playoffs in 1994, I think it was, yeah. or 1995, and of course the the battle for relegation in 1997 on the end, or was it 1998? Um, Chris, when Chris Waddle manager um, for of, of Burnley, obviously Burnley ultimately winning both of them clashes um, and Burnley getting promoted to what was Division 1 at the time and then obviously we got relegated pretty soon after that I think it was the season after but then nearly going through into what was Division 4 at the time uh, sorry Division 3 at the time into uh, out of Division 2 but obviously we played you on the last day of the season and ended up beating you and staying up unfortunately for you guys sending you down um, but I always remember something in like 2004 2005 I think it was in 442 magazine they did like a a graph of who's each team's most hated rivals. And mm. Plymouth had, I can't remember it where I think it was Exeter, somebody else, and then Burnley in third. And I was like, what the hell? Like, why why, yeah. why did Plymouth dislike Burnley? So I want to ask, is that still a thing? Do you guys still dislike us because of 95 and 97, 98, whatever it was, because uh, of the 90s? Yeah. Maybe I'm showing your age and not mine here, but I don't remember those games because i wasn't born yeah thanks for that oh thanks for that mate but, yeah fair enough. yeah so, <laughs> i was at them both <laughs> so it's kind of hard i mean i was born for the uh, i was alive in 2000 uh, in the sorry in the 97 one but i was only <laughs> two so don't remember that too well um but i do remember as we were growing up there there, there was a hatred towards burnley mm. um i never really understood it and then obviously when you were as i was growing up and you were like becoming uh Barclays men in the in the Premier League. I would I didn't mind you personally. Um so don't come at me. Come at everybody else. But yeah, there, there's always been I think those playoff games, I think um from those playoff games and then we didn't play you for so long. And because yeah. you relegated us, I think that that's it. Like just we, festered we, on we've it. Never really liked it's anybody. Quarter similar. Yeah. yeah. We've never Stop really liked it. anybody in Claret to be honest. Like I hate Scunforth as well. Um, that's bizarre and, as well because they're at the other end of the country to you. Yeah, you? yeah. It's it basically all all stands for a game in which um, our keeper tried to bowl the ball out when he was injured. Josh Morris uh, picked it up on the edge of the the six yard box and uh, eighteen yard box and, and dinked it over the keeper, scored an equaliser, mm. and it sent both of us down. I mean, it's gone really well for them now that yeah. I'm going to say that they're practically not well. exist anymore, really. Um, so yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I hate them, but I'm quite glad that they uh, haven't returned to the football league yet. Let's put it that way. Uh, so yeah, um, it, it must be just a claret and amber. Yeah, thing. if they're your, I know that you get a bit. Uh, some people yeah. say burgundy or whatever scum for par, but I don't, I don't it's, care it's, enough. To be fair, I always, I always say the four claret and blue teams. Are West Ham, Villa, Burnley, and Scunthorpe. Um, yeah. But I've only ever, re- I probably don't include Scunthorpe in that anymore because they don't exist. You, you probably, well, they do <laughs> exist, obviously. That's a bit harsh. Um, but you, you might as well include Chelmsford Town in it if you're going to include Scunthorpe in it exactly. because they're so far down. But anyway, interesting to see that there was that hatred. And, and I do mm. find that bizarre. But again, I can kind of it, understand it at the same I time. I think it'll be interesting to see on Tuesday how the away end acts because there, there might be a few of the older generation who, because uh, like I said, we haven't really played you. There's some like 2004, like you said, till 2009 when we were in the same league, but then you went off into the Premier League and we... Yeah, I um, remember I remember, I remember, remember the win at Home Park um, in the year we went up in, in 2009. I think you got relegated that year, didn't you? I remember Robbie Blake scoring a free kick at Home Park. Mm. I think we won 2-1 or 2-0. I can't remember, but I do remember playing you around that yeah, era. I, the only real memory I have of playing Burnley is, is Brian Jensen saving a penalty and I can never remember which game that was in. Or, I think it was in... Against loss. you or... Yeah. Uh, yeah, interesting. No, I, I might have been that game then. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't add it off the top of my head. They all merge into one eventually, don't they? Like, yeah, they do. After a bit, they do. Wait till you get to, to, to your late 30s, mate. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the sort of like older generation are acting in the away mm. end and on social media of the Plymouth fans. Obviously, 
I'm recording this on Sunday. Um, I'm not going to be putting it out until Monday. Um, so I do need to get this wrapped up pretty soon because I have a full time show to where I discuss Oxford pretty soon. Uh, <laughs> you've got a you've got a roast in the oven. Um, so yeah, we'll get this wrapped up pretty quickly because I don't want you to burn your Yorkshires, mate. Um, so let's quickly get into the predictions, mate. You said your heart is predicting a win, but what's your head saying? When you put some brain power to it, what's your prediction, mate? Yeah, I, I like to think that I'm quite optimistic, but it turns out that my that my attempts in the prediction league, I'm actually quite pessimistic. Um, so I've gone for a, I've gone a two one win in my heart. I think, like I said, we can get that early goal, maybe go two ahead on the counter, and then you maybe claw one back late in the second half to add a bit of drama before we make that mammoth journey home, um, which would which would be a nice finish, I think. Um, but I think my head's just saying, um, what is my head saying? I don't know. The, the, the Sunderland and the Luton results have skewed it. My head's still saying like we can get a draw out of this. Um, yeah. yeah, why not? Let's go one all draw from ahead, but my heart's 2 1 win. No, that's fair enough. I I think I said it on the show last week, so a lot of the Burnley fans will be thinking, stop repeating yourself, mate. But I went on Man City podcasts and Arsenal podcasts last year saying yeah. it'll be 1 1. I'm not for one second saying we are Man City or Arsenal, by the way. Um, but so, like in a game where you're expected to lose, mm -hmm. uh, I do think we'll win. Um, but the Oxford and the Ports of Games have left me a little bit less confident. Um, I think we need to learn how to sort of like break teams down. That I'm not saying you're going to sit on the edge of the box, but break teams down that we are expected to beat. I mean, okay, someone mm. would argue we did break Portsmouth down because we beat them. But obviously my main memory at the minute is Oxford. Um, I think it'll be closer than a lot are anticipating. So I'm just going to go for a narrow 1-0 Burnley win because I'm sick of sitting here and saying, yeah, we'll win 3-0, 3-1, and then it being so close that I'm being anxious. Um, but mm. yeah, I think Burnley will win. I think we ultimately have the quality to, to turn hopefully some possession uh, into chances which is what we didn't do with the possession against Oxford but yeah I'm uh, hoping for a win mate yeah yeah like you said I think you, you like or sorry like you said definitely got the quality to do that um just looking at your squad even after the 150 odd players that you sold in the <laughs> summer it's still it's still phenomenal for the level isn't it and um you know thankfully football isn't paid on paper but if it was uh, you should should be able to turn us over quite easily, but yeah, um, here's hoping. If, you... if yeah, sorry mate, if football was played on paper, we we would have we would have won at the weekend. It was a long drive. I enjoyed myself at the Kassam Stadium. It's a new ground for me. Must, um, must be the first but... person to enjoy themselves at the Kassam. You know right. what? I've always seen people whinging about it and saying it's dreadful. I didn't mind it. I, obviously, mm. there's a massive gaping hole, literally to the way fans right hand side and I would imagine as the guy next to me did say imagine if you're here in winter and the rain's caving in I bet it's hard work but it was nice and sunny I enjoyed it like an old school football ground it looked a little tired in areas I remember dodging a cobweb on the way in through one of the turnstiles and the toilets were pretty much what I used to see back in the division two days <laughs> all them time ago but I actually didn't mind it to be fair De yeah. decent little stadium just looks a little tired that's how I'd have it um, but yeah we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up there then mate but before I wrap it up do you want to let everyone know where they can find you and your content and where they can judge on who they actually want to vote for at the Football yeah. Content Awards, best podcast in the Football League? Yeah, quite. Like, um, like I said, go and vote for us instead of Turfcast. You can find us on uh, all your social media platforms. You can just search for Argyle Life. Uh, if you want to listen to the podcast version of us, it's the Green and White podcast. Don't ask why they're different names. I didn't name it. Um, and then... If you want to vote for us, it's uh, you can just find it in our social bios. It's everywhere. We haven't stopped tweeting about it, unlike uh, Turfcast, who obviously don't care that much about their their nominations. So <laughs> I don't know why I'm still going on. Absolutely <laughs> none of your fans are going to vote for us over you. But uh, maybe, maybe we'll do, we'll a, know, we'll do a post-match reaction on Wednesday night as well. But I can imagine you do that as well. So... Uh, we do. To... Whether we'll get a live on Wednesday night, I'm not sure. That's a different debate, which I will discuss well, with the lads that do the full time. We'll definitely do fan reactions. Whether I'll get to do a live, I'm not sure. Just a quick live look at the diary, because I'm one of them losers that still uses a physical diary. I am working on Wednesday until 8 p.m. So there might be a time there to fill mm. in, because I am working from home as well uh, on Wednesday, which is nice. But anyway. 
Thank you very much for going on the show, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yes, I recommend people go and check out your stuff if they want to. I have appeared on that channel myself uh, at the start of the season. Uh, I will be doing some answering some write-up questions for you if that's still happening. Oh, Feel yes. Free to send it. Yeah, I will send, send them, them to me, mate. You've not sent them yet. Um, so, yeah. But thank you for coming on, mate. Good luck for the rest of the season just after Tuesday. Cheers, mate. Angie.